Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm finally gonna be trying a puzzle from Antelope Puzzles. So I actually have about five of these in my collection and I just still haven't got around to trying a single one out. So I figure today is the day that we're gonna finally do one. And from what I can tell, Antelope are based in the US. They have a US address on their website um, and they seem to work with a range of artists and have a whole bunch of different puzzle collections available. Um, so the one that I've chosen to do today is this beautiful one called Whisper of Cactus and that's 1000 pieces. It's by the artist Lin Wei Lin. And yeah, it's just this really beautiful and fairly colorful kind of, yeah, just image of all these different varieties of cactus plants that seem to be in bloom with their you know, lovely little colorful flowers. And yeah, there's a lot of different colors and different textures going on. Yeah, it's just really beautiful. It sort of looks a bit painterly. I'm not really sure if it's like a actually painted or like digital artwork, I'm not too certain. But either way, it's yeah, just really lovely. So in a sec, I'm going to have a closer look at the packaging, unbox it, uh, we'll check out the pieces and of course, do some puzzling and I'll also let you know my thoughts on the brand. So let's look at the packaging. So the uh, front of the box has what I believe is the entire image on it and it also has this cute little stamp here which I guess is sort of the antelope like logo. It seems to be on I think most of the puzzles I have of theirs if not all but it also says 1000 piece puzzle yeah it has the little sort of antelope animal symbol and yeah it just says antelope so it's kind of cute I like that. And then each of the sides I think has more or less the same information. So it's got the name of the puzzle, which is Whisper of Cactus, and it's got by Lin Wei Lin, the artist, that says 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle. And then it also has here a small version of the entire image, and also has some little elements taken from the image. So some of the little cactus flowers, which is cute, and there as well. And that seems to be the same information on this side, but different little flowers here. And then this is the same as the other long side and this is the same as the other short side. And then on the back, we've got a bit of information and we've got the uh, entire image here as well. And it's got, um, what's it got? It's got, it says here, Whisper of Cactus, 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle, artwork, um, I guess copyright Lin Wei Lin. Um, and then it talks a bit about the artist um, and also about some of the cacti or cactus plants that are featured here. It has actually lists some of the varieties. Um, I don't know which one's which, but it sort of just lists them in, I guess, a numerical order. But yeah, it talks a bit about where the artist is based and stuff like that. Um, and then it lists the puzzle size here as well. It says, I'll put it on the top of the screen, 29.5 by 20 by 0.5 inches and 750 by uh, 520 millimeters. Um, and it has a little uh, sort of outline of a piece and it says actual size. So that's sort of handy to know. Um, what else have we got here? We've got the address of them, their socials. It says puzzle gray board and talks about sort of uh, the packaging and stuff and what it's made from. Got a caution barcode with the price, which presumably is a US price, which says $16.99. And again, has a little antelope logo. So yeah, it's got quite a lot of useful information on it. So let's open it up and have a look. Oh, I forgot to mention as well that the box is fairly sturdy. Like it's, it's got a nice sort of smooth, I guess, UV coating finish. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice and it's yeah, fairly sturdy. Although that being said, like I ordered this from Amazon and it did come a little bit, I think. Oh yeah, there's a tiny bit of like denting like where it's been pushed in a little bit down here. But unfortunately, this is Amazon we're talking about, so that seems to happen with a lot of puzzles, no matter how sturdy the boxes are. So um, anyway, and then, so we've opened it up and the inside is just white. Um, so pretty simple. And then the edges of this part of the box are just uh, that sort of like rusty brown color, so no text. And then what have we got here? Okay, we do actually have a resealable bag. So it looks like we probably still have to cut it open, which means I have to grab my scissors, but it is a Ziploc bag, so that's cool. Um, and it's got the antelope logo on it and some warnings. Um, and then it looks like, oh, 
we've got a little poster here. So yeah, that's, I guess, an okay size. Maybe it could be bigger. Um, I mean, I guess personally, I can see a lot of the details, but you know, if you uh, needed, you know, if you had trouble seeing smaller details, maybe a big, slightly bigger poster would have been a bit more handy, but hey, at least we have a poster, so that's good. Um, yeah, so it's just normal paper. And then, yeah, just the plain uh, white on the inside. So I've poured the pieces into the box and just looking at the bag, um, it is a little bit sort of cloudy looking, but there's no like chunky bits of puzzle dust, so that's a good sign. And if we look at the pieces, they tend to be a sort of standard, I guess what you call a grid cut. Um, yeah, so standard piece shapes and sort of, yeah, traditional piece shapes. So we've got here like one with two tabs, we've got one with three tabs, um, one with a single tab, uh, zero tabs or inverted. What else do we have? Four tabs and do we have another two tab one? Probably. One day I'll find it. Uh huh. Hey, finally, one with two tabs. So yeah, it has like all these sort of classic piece shapes that you sort of expect. So that's good. And um, so far in terms of like damaged pieces, so I will talk a bit more about the backing in a sec. They do have a white paper backing. And so I've seen a little bit of damage here and they're very minor of like, you know, the white paper being a little bit bent or splitting a little bit. So like that little corner there is coming up a little bit from the other layers. Um, I think I saw like, oh yeah, like the paper on this tab here is like a little bit bent. And that's sort of generally why I'm not a huge fan of white paper backing because I, from my experience, I've sort of seen that it gets damaged or sometimes the paper actually comes off, but we'll see how it goes. So far it's only just very minor things. So hopefully it won't be too much of a problem. Um, so let's look at a actual piece. So grab this one here. So yes, like I said, it's got a white paper backing. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty simple. And then the thickness is just a nice medium thickness actually. Um, and I mean, sure, I could like bend the tabs. I think you can bend most puzzle pieces if you try, but it still feels very strong. It's definitely not flimsy or like soft or anything like that. Like it feels pretty strong, pretty sturdy. Uh, yeah, very like nice. And then the top is this really nice sort of smooth um, surface or coating. It kind of is pretty similar to the box, I would say. Yeah, I think it's quite similar. It has that sort of, uh, I think like a coating on it that you'd call like a UV coating. Um, you sort of find it on some magazine covers or like novel, like book covers, that very smooth, almost a bit plasticky kind of feel, but yeah, it feels really nice. Um, it actually seems to be like, despite being so smooth, it does seem to be pretty matte. Like I can see a bit of sheen on it when I move it around, but it's not overly glossy or anything like that. It definitely is more on the matte side. So yeah, hopefully that translates well to the puzzling experience, we'll have to see. Um, and then the other thing is, I guess, in terms of like the clarity of the image, it seems from what I can tell, reasonably clear. Um, the colors seem pretty bright and seem to match what's on the box. So yeah, I'll have to sort of see as we go, but from what I can tell, it seems nice. So yeah. Um, so we're gonna get puzzling in a sec, but before we do, let's figure out how I'm gonna approach this. So um, looking at the edge pieces, it seems like the puzzle image does go all the way to the edge. There's no extra border or anything like that. And because of that, I think, um, well, also because there's a lot of detail and a lot going on in the image, I think it should be pretty easy to put the edge or border together first. So I think that's gonna be what I do. And then after that, I was sort of wondering like, oh, do I do the cactus plants first or the flowers? But I actually figure, well, I don't really need to worry about which one of those to do first. I think it's more about what colors I wanna do first. So, you know, I could pull out all the yellow here, like there's yellow flowers and cactus, or there's like some pinks or this lovely purple, which to me really stands out, or orange, white, whatever, or even like different textures. So I think it's gonna be kind of intuitive where I just sort of see what stands out or jumps out at me. And that's probably what I'll sort of do first or after doing the border. So yeah, I think that's how we're gonna tackle this one. Um, so I think 
we might as well get into some puzzling. So I'm pretty sure I'm about halfway through the puzzle now and I'm really liking how it's looking. I think the flowers just add some really nice pretty pops of colour. They're just very vibrant and yeah, just beautiful. And I'm really liking as well these cactus plants are starting to emerge. I think they just look really cool with the sort of like their colours and their different like shades of green and blue and brown and things like that. Yeah, I think they look really cool. I think the image is going to look really nice once it's finished. Um, so the first session of puzzling took about three hours and ten minutes including sorting and I yeah I'm pretty happy with that it's, I think that's not bad to get to sort of halfway um, there were definitely easier parts like of course uh, the brighter flowers were definitely more easy to put together but then uh, like this cactus here and this one here with the sort of stripes were definitely a bit more challenging and more time consuming so I'm guessing the second session of puzzling is probably going to be pretty time consuming just because there's a lot of cactus um, to fill in like and these two boxes here have a lot of very muted kind of colors a lot of gr darker greens and browns and I guess sort of bluey colors so yeah that might be a bit I think challenging still to put the rest of this together but that being said I am definitely feeling more familiar and um, sort of feel like I'm figuring out where things go a lot more with the image so yeah we'll just have to see how that goes so let's talk about the quality um, yeah so far I'm quite enjoying it I'm having a really good puzzling experience um, the pieces are really like nice and smooth and actually surprisingly quite matte there really hasn't been any sheen or glare problems at all when puzzling like there's a bit of sheen now with the extra lighting but nothing really that bad at all like it's not at all glossy so yeah that's been making the experience really like easy going and enjoyable and the piece fit is quite good um, the pieces just fit fairly comfortably together that being said there have been like maybe two or three false fits um, which isn't you know the end of the world and it's not a real big deal at all but I just thought I'd mention it um, yeah but apart from that yeah the pieces fit nicely together so I've got here a section that I just sort of loosened earlier so you can pick up pretty big 
sections. Um, it's a little bit hit and miss, like it's not always consistent. Like this fit is still kind of loose, like, <laughs> so it doesn't always, sections can't always be picked up. Um, mostly they can, but sometimes bits will come off or yeah, it's not perfect, but it's still pretty good. I've definitely still found it like more useful than not useful. So yeah, I'm still ha pretty happy with the fit. Um, and of course you can like take pieces apart pretty easily as well without like causing any damage or anything, anything like that. Um, so speaking of damage, um, yeah, I haven't really noticed anything more than what I talked about before. Just some really minor, like, you know, a bit of, uh, like bent white paper on the back or maybe a little bit of a bent tab here and there, but really, uh, pretty, yeah, pretty minor, not like not really impacting the puzzling at all. So that's good. Um, and then I think the last thing is puzzle dust, which I've been really impressed. There really isn't any, um, the board is pretty much spotless. So that's great. Um, I think there was probably a little bit on my hands, but really like there's no puzzle dust at all. So yeah, really happy with that. Um, so in a sec, I'm going to continue on with more puzzling. Um, I think I'm just going to keep on doing what I've been doing where I just pull out, I guess, colors or patterns that, you know, are distinct or that jump out at me and work on those. Um, that seems to be working pretty well so far. So yeah, I'm not quite sure exactly which order I'm going to do things, whether I try and fill in all these blue sort of cactus, there are like a lot of them, or maybe I'll even like try and fill in the sort of background color, which is uh, this sort of like fairly vibrant, ready brown or rusty color kind of stands out a lot. So yeah, maybe I'll even do that. Um, but yeah, I think it should be pretty fun putting the rest of this together. So I think we might as well get back into some puzzling. I'm back and I've finished this puzzle and I think it looks really beautiful. I really love the sort of pops of color with the flowers. They're just really pretty. And I really enjoyed the like different sort of textures and sort of color variations. Yeah, I think the overall image is just really beautiful. And yeah, I'm really pleased with how it looks. 
So that last session of puzzling took a bit less than last time, two hours and 45 minutes this time. And all up, it took, I guess, just under six hours, including sorting to endpoint. So yeah, that's a bit quicker than I was expecting, especially because I felt like some of the sections in the puzzle were definitely a bit more slow going and uh, challenging than other sections, uh, especially some of these like darker green areas and this cactus here and even these other green ones. Um, but I think it was overall like a good mix of sort of, uh, I guess, skill level, like the flowers were very easy and then you had other parts that were sort of just medium difficulty and then others that were a bit more challenging, but still doable. Um, yeah, so I think overall I had a really fun and enjoyable time putting this one together. Um, so let's talk about the quality. Um, yeah, I pretty much agree with everything I said before. So it's just a lovely smooth surface and surprisingly quite matte. There's a tiny bit of sheen, uh, especially under the filming lights, but it wasn't at all a problem when I was puzzling. So that's good. Um, the piece fit is really quite comfortable and the pieces fit nicely together. I didn't have any more uh, false fits, just those two or three in the sort of first session, but after that it was fine. And yeah, I could still sort of pick up pretty decent sized sections. Um, sometimes they were a little bit loose and bits would fall apart, but for the most part, I could still sort of pick them up. Like you can, I would say you could definitely do a puzzle pick up with this, so that's good. Um, and then the other thing is you can like undo pieces pretty easily. So that's important when taking your puzzle apart so you don't damage it. So yeah, it's not so tight that it won't come undone. So that's good. And then what else? Oh, speaking of damage, um, yeah, there wasn't really any more. I think I can see like one little bent tab down here. That's probably about the worst damage that I've sort of like seen in the puzzle, but even that's pretty minor and not too bad. Yeah, most of the damage was just a little bits of like, I guess, uh, areas of like the white paper backing that were a little bit bent or damaged. But yeah, I really didn't seem to affect the look of the puzzle or the puzzling uh, experience itself. So yeah, I'm fine with that. And then I think the only other thing is dust. Um, yeah, really, there really isn't any. So even when I lifted that up, the, the board is pretty much spotless. So yeah, I was, I'm really pleased with that. Uh, yeah, I didn't really have to worry about dust at all. So that's great. Um, so I think that's all I have to say about the quality. So yeah, just overall really enjoyed it and yeah, found the quality to be pretty, yeah, pretty good. So let's talk about the price. So I got this one, uh, I think like late last year. Yes, it's been that long. Um, and I got it off Amazon Australia and I got it for $31.20 Australian. Um, I've noticed that the prices for these antelope puzzles on Amazon Australia sort of range, like the price fluctuates because it's Amazon, but I've seen it sort of range between $25 to sort of $35. That seems to be where most of them kind of sit. Um, but when I look up the US price, well, for a start, the, this box, presumably this is the US price, it says $16.99. Um, but at the moment on their website and also their US Amazon listing, um, the price is $19.99. So yeah, maybe this is an older puzzle and the price has increased since like COVID and that sort of thing, um, which, you know, that seems pretty, you know, not surprising at all, I guess. Um, but yeah, to me, that still sounds like, I guess, a fairly reasonable price. You have to let me know if you're from North America, if you think that's still a affordable price. Yeah, so for me, um, 3120 Australian, um, that's, yeah, that's a pretty like reasonable price. It's not super cheap, but it's definitely affordable, you know, uh, affordable to mid-range price point. Um, you know, that's sort of similar price to like Eurographics here or some Cobble Hill, even some Ravensburger. So you can definitely get a lot of other brands for around about the same price. Um, and I kind of feel like for that price, um, with this puzzle, you're getting, you know, just as much as you'd get with those other puzzles. You know, you have pretty, pretty decent quality. You get a nice box, you get a resealable bag, a little poster. Yeah. I feel like, you know, you're getting just as much as any of those other sort of brands that are sort of sit in that price range. So yeah, I think for that sort of at that affordable price, um, yeah, I would definitely recommend 
uh, this puzzle and assuming that their other puzzles are the same sort of quality and same you get the same sort of th experience and things included then I would yeah definitely recommend trying out the antelope brand if you haven't already. In the comments below let me know what you thought of this puzzle did you like the image and have you done any antelope puzzles before and if so let us know in the comments what your experience was like. If you enjoyed this video then make sure you show that like button some love and for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released but you're also helping this channel grow and you can find me over on instagram at jigsaw underscore jibby where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye!